I'm taking my cue from Italy, a country that takes home cooking, family and fresh, vibrant flavors extremely seriously. Yes, we do, Gordo, and you know that. Did you think of this when you made your carbonara? It sticks on the ceiling, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Nicely chopped. Oh my god, he's putting parsley in the colander. This guy is mad. This guy is crazy. He's mad. This, this guy, guy is mad. mad. I don't know what you're stealing, Daddy Stumble. You, you cannot, cannot serve pasta with, with a steak, steak on top. top. No way. I'm angry and all the Italians are angry. Just see my face and bang your head going like this. Oh. That's right, drain the pasta. Where do you drain the pasta? Show me. Oh my god, with the cuts of the salt and pepper. Basta <laughs> to put salt and pepper in the pasta, in the colander. In this video, we are reacting to Gordon Ramsay's Guide to Italian Cooking. As you know, Gordon Ramsay is the master of Italian cooking. So he created a video where he's gonna show you how to cook like an Italian. So let's watch it. Let's see how good it is. Italian. Today, I'm taking my cue from Italy, a country that takes home cooking, family and fresh, vibrant flavors extremely seriously. Yes, we do, Gordo, and you know that. Did you think of this when you made your carbonara? It sticks on the ceiling, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Or when you showed everyone how to cook pasta and then you put it in the colander with olive oil and salt. Salt and pepper, a tablespoon of olive oil. <laughs> Hello. Mm? Gordo, come on. The Italians are brilliant at using good food to bring people together. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Italian food is amazing if it's done the right way. Today's dishes are also really quick and easy to make, leaving you more time to sit down and enjoy them with your friends and family. Look okay, a little good. <laughs> First up in my ultimate Italian food, a deliciously tasty breakfast of fennel sausage frittata. Fennel sausage frittata? Wow! Let's see how you make it. Fennel sausage frittata. Sounds really good. The exciting thing about frittata is the fact there's no set. Frittata! Basically, eggs, whatever else you have left. Yes, yeah, sure. You can do frittata. It's like an omelette, Italian omelette, that you can use any ingredients that you want. No rules. It's eggs with any leftovers, if you want to use leftovers. The secret of a good frittata is in the sausage. Most of the times, frittata is vegetarian. Could be with asparagus, cherry tomatoes, potatoes, onions, parsley, nothing else in there. If you're making a sausage frittata, yes, you need to have a good sausage, so I agree. But just make it yourself clear when you speak, okay? For this frittata you're making, the sausage is the most important ingredient. Is that what you're trying to say? Nice hot pan, onions in. That's a lot of onion. I thought you were cutting fennel. I thought you said fennel and sausages. Heat, nice and high. Season. Fennel seeds, forgive the onions. Oh, so you're using fennel seeds and you're calling this fennel frittata? That's okay, that's what you want to use. You could have used Italian sausages with fennel and they have already fennel seeds in it. But the onion, they look like fennel. Cut it small. We're, We're not, not doing, doing English, English breakfast, breakfast here, here okay? okay? A really nice flavor. Everyone's used to cooking sausages whole, but it's a really nice way of using them, take them out of the thin skin. Who's everyone? I mean, when I make pasta, I always do this. Most of the time I cook sausages like this. Unless I cook them on the barbecue, I don't cut it. I leave it as it is. But if I cook, I like to break my sausages. And what we're gonna do is crumple all that wonderful, spicy fennel sausage into the onions. So you're using a fennel sausage? Already has fennel in it, okay. You're putting extra. Oh, okay. It's gonna release all that flavor a lot quicker. Pretty important to keep that gas nice and high. Yeah, what he's saying is right, it looks beautiful. Six whole eggs. Nice, nice, a nice amount, six eggs. Give the eggs a really good mix. Flatly parsley, a staple. Bravo, parsley, yeah, bravo. The Italian cooking. Parsley is a staple, but not on carbonara, not on everything, you know? Like we use basil more than parsley. So parsley, basil, yes, but you don't put it everywhere. Quite rough. Some parmesan. Because it's a really nice seasoning. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. Parmigiano, parsley, the sausages are nice, the onion is nice, just too big. A little touch of salt. Get it in there. Nice mm. Yeah, it's good, bravo. When you fork through it, so when you slice it, 
No one's complaining they've got less sausage. He did put a lot of sausages in there, so it's very rich uh, sausages and onion, which is not bad, it's very good. Even more Italian by topping it with some buffalo mozzarella. Oh, okay, so you're making a frittata pizza. I mean, I like cheese on frittata. It's not the way it's done it, but it's a good idea. See, the thing is, Gordon, the frittata is not cooked yet, right? So the way I like to cook frittata is to cook it first on the, on the stove, the bottom, then I put it in the oven so it becomes puffy and it cooks properly. And then you can add the cheese right at the end so it melts on top. If you do it now, I don't know. And then slice it nice and thinly. You could have cleaned that knife. Twist it. Why are you twisting the mozzarella? I've never seen that before. Why are you twisting the mozzarella? Why? Why? What? And then finally, finish it with that parmesan cheese. This is a pizza, Gordon, this is a pizza. <laughs> get the top just as tasty as it is the bottom. I don't get it. My frittata needs three and a half to four minutes under a red hot grill. Okay, nice, he's doing that, using the grill. Okay, I normally use fan forced oven, so I cook it evenly. I don't want to burn the top part, but you have so much cheese, so you do need to do that. To achieve the best results, always ensure your oven or grill are preheated to the perfect temperature. This is the thing I love about Italian cooking. It's about sharing, but always focusing on the ingredients. Yes! Now, Gordon, this is nice. It looks like a, a frittata pizza. I like it. It's good. The ingredients are nice. Look at that. I mean, it's incredible. Look at that. A little shake the pan to make sure it comes out. And then spatula underneath and just leave it. Bellissimo. Look how beautiful this frittata is. Gordon, bellissimo. I can see you're an omelette king. It's light, fluffy, and it smells incredible. And that for me is a dream come true. It's Bellissimo. amazing how far you can take six eggs and two sausages. Amazing, Gordon. Bravissimo. I love it. Fennel sausage frittata, my ultimate Italian breakfast. Okay, let's see what the next dish is. Burrata. One of Italy's most recent cheesy exports was invented back in the 1920s from a need to make use of the little scraps of mozzarella left in the cheese making vat. Man, man, this Gordon Ramsay did his own work. He knows what burrata is. It's my favorite cheese, Gordon. I love burrata so much. And I'm glad you discovered this amazing ingredient. It's beautiful. So what are you gonna do with the burrata? This luxurious, rich, pugilant delicacy is now becoming more popular in our supermarkets. Ah, yeah, that makes me happy. Yes! Yes! My favorite cheese can now be found everywhere. Money bags. We can do the This looks fine. Doesn't it? We need to season them lightly. You don't need to season it because the inside is already salty, but okay, you can season it. There's nothing wrong with that. Drizzle over a little olive oil and dust them with lemon zest. Wow! <laughs> Bellissimo, Gordon. Bellissimo. Extra virgin olive oil, salt, and lemon. Like in Naples. Bravissimo. And there. The only thing I would say, Gordon, I'm just trying to be picky here, just to, when you serve, remove that strings around the burrata. You don't need to serve it like that. But Gordon, it's beautiful. It's really nice. It's a beautiful idea to put a lemon on it. I've eaten this in Naples and it blew my mind. <laughs> Bravissimo, Gordon. If I had to choose one herb synonymous with Italy, this would be it. Basil. Ah, oh, bellissimo, Gordo. You're so romantic in this video. Basil, basil. I love it. If I was a woman, I want a basil, a bunch of basil for Valentine's Day. The perfect partner for tomato. La miseria, Gordon. Use your hands to chop a basil. Learn from Jamie Oliver. You love Jamie Oliver. You're a best friend with him. Cut, Cut the, the basil with your, your finger. Fingers. If you do it on the chopping board, it stays on the chopping board. Pounded with parmesan and pine nuts for a delicious pesto. Yeah, I know you like pesto. I love pesto too. Pesto. Soft, silky, aromatic leaves will bring a taste of the Mediterranean to any dish they touch. Yes. Oh my God, Gordon, you're so romantic. A deliciously fresh orzo pasta salad. This is impressive. You're making orzo pasta. Bravissimo. My nonno used to love orzo pasta. I don't use it much, to be honest. I've actually made orzo pasta for probably 15, 16 years. Gordon, maybe you're inspiring me to Make orzo tonight. Let's watch it. This is one of the hidden delicacies of Italian pasta, orzo. Because 90% of the time it's always hidden. So it's interesting. So when I was in Italy and I went to see the pasta factory and they make beautiful artisan products and I was asking, what is the most popular pasta 
life you have. And of course, you know, spaghetti, penne, fusilli. But he also said in the top five, he said orzo. Orzo is extremely popular. And I wonder why, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't use orzo much, but I find this interesting. So many of you like it. So do you want me to make a recipe with orzo? In a soup or broth or minestrone, and it looks like large grains of rice. But once they absorb that water, they double in size. They're also called like risoni. Some brand call them risoni, not orzo. They're pretty much the same thing. It's a pasta that needs a lot of help. Season it nicely. A pinch of salt, a splash of extra virgin. Mannaggia, Gordo, mannaggia! You don't put olive oil in the water. Use a large pot. A fresh bay leaf. And that bay leaf really helps the flavor. Okay. Give me a little pan. A turn left and right. That stops any pasta sticking to the bottom. What? This is something I never heard before. I normally go with a spoon and stir. I'm such an idiot for doing that. I can just do that. I, I use large pots, pots and I like to touch my food. I like to fill it with my hands. So I'm gonna put a spoon in there and make sure the pasta doesn't touch the bottom. It's having a nice gentle rolling boil. You just have the gas up where the outside of the pan is just rolling. And all that orzo is tumbling over each other. All of a sudden, Gordon woke up one morning and said, I'm Italian, I'm gonna cook like an Italian. I feel like I'm watching me cooking here. It's so romantic. Parmesan, twist of fresh pepper. Of the lemon. Ooh, wow, very Mediterranean. Squeeze your lemon in there, through your fingers to catch all this. Hey, that's Jamie Oliver style. That's what Jamie Oliver does. Hi guys, let me show you the way to get the largest amount of juice from all your citrus. Bring that together with some extra virgin olive oil. He loves extra virgin olive oil. Pineapples taste delicious. Toasting them just elevates. Oh, Gordon, I love you. After eight minutes, my orzo is perfectly al dente. Al dente. Oh, he likes to say that. Strain it. A little bit of cold water. Strain it. Close the cooking process down. Just stop it from going mushy. I will not do that, to be honest. It's not something I will do, but he's got the Ramsey, so if he says that, we have to trust him, right? It's the size of pumpkin seeds now. A drizzle of olive oil. No! Mannaggia la miseria, Gordon. You said you've been to eat at Italian food, this and that. Respect for food. Che cazzo metti extra virgin olive oil in the colander? Ma che fai? What's the point? Why you cool down the, the, the orzo? You don't do that. You cook the orzo when everything else is ready. Mannaggia, Gordon. How many times do I have to tell you? The, the pasta, pasta needs, needs to, to be cooked, cooked when, when all, all your ingredients, ingredients are ready. ready. So the pasta from the pot goes straight with the sauce. Drizzle of olive oil into the vinaigrette whilst it's still warm. Just above room temperature. Because the warmer the pasta, the more it absorbs the vinaigrette. And now, some texture. Ecco qua. Okay, the rocket is okay to cut, but not the basil. Not finely chopped. But the fresh basil as well. Roll them up like a big fat cigar. Slice in half. No, no! no! Use your hands, Gordon! Then chop the basil. I love basil, it's my favorite ingredient. You destroy it. A crunch. Just sprinkle the toasted pine nuts. Make it beautiful. It looks like a plate of jewels. It is, it does. It's a delicious, very fragrant orzo pasta salad. Cordo, sei bravissimo. Bravo! <laughs> so good in this video, Gordo. I'm honest, you're really good. You're really good. And a hearty main of beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. Slow braised beef cheeks with pappardelle. Yeah! This is gonna be good! My only issue here is, I can see the pasta in there, and I can see the sauce on top, but I don't see them together. So, the most important thing in the pasta rules is to combine the sauce and the pasta together, toss it, make sure they make love together, and then serve. If you do not do that, okay, you're gonna eat a dead pasta with the sauce on top. And that's not what we want, that's not what an Italian food lover does, okay? So I'm not expecting Gordon to do this because if that's what he did, then you destroyed the video. You, so far, you've been so good. Just think the size of your little cheeks. Yeah. Imagine the size of a cow with them. And the cheek is right underneath here. Uh, beef cheeks are so good, so tender, so delicious. His son seems to be very nice. He's given a really nice season. Okay, salt and pepper cool. on there, please. So, big cheeks, very cheap. He loves salt. A little touch of oil in the pan. What we want to do is get them really nicely coloured. Sear. Sear into the pan. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Lay it down. 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 And then again, there. No. I'm sorry, but if you're making a sauce, you're making a ragu for a pasta, the onion is way too chunky. Gordon, come on. 
you're good at cutting. Shut off. Chop the onion th small, small pieces. You don't want to eat chunks of onion in the pasta. So, a really good colour on the cheeks. Oh, nice. Beautiful. You can leave that at a restaurant if they take so long. They go in the oven literally half past six, seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but the restaurant, everything has to be pre-prepared, you know? There's things that you can do on the spot. Most of the things needs to be pre-prepared, okay? I'm not saying everything, so don't, don't take me the wrong way. A good restaurant is all about organisation, being organised. Of course, fresh. And the longer you leave them, in their juices mm. and the cooking liquor, mm. the better. Yeah, he's done it before. Nice cloves of garlic. Good. Onions in and garlic in, please. Nice. Show me the inside, because I need to see the inside, okay? It looks like the onions are big and the garlic is small. There it is. He loves bay leaf. He just put bay leaf everywhere. <laughs> Look how chunky. Look how chunky they are now. Look at that. Come on, you're not making a hot dog. Put the cheeks back in, please. Right, red wine in. You can actually use red wine for cooking, okay? So deglaze will basically sort of rinse all that flavour at the bottom of the pan. The wine is such an important ingredient because it tenderizes the meat, gives flavours, and like I said, you know, it's going to help to clean the bottom of the pan, which is full of flavours. It's going to make the most amazing sauce. Okay, you tomato. tomato sauce goes inside when the wine evaporates. He's using Cheerio chopped tomatoes. I like it, it's a good brand. Chopped canned tomatoes will make a much better sauce. Yeah, you know, some people like that more. I prefer to use peeled tomatoes and then I blend it or crush by hand and put in the sauce. That's even better than passata. But crushed tomatoes are pretty good if you use a good brand. Top that with some stock. So the secret of raisin. I forgot about this. You need to make the sofrito, which is onion, celery, and carrots. Where are they? You don't want to use celery? Okay. You want to use garlic? Okay. But do the sofrito first. Then you add the meat. Then you add the wine, which is good. The wine evaporates. You add the sauce. Then you can add the water. But you want stock? What can I say? My bad. Little of the meat exposed, and 90% of it submerged. See them there? You want this beef chick to become like a pulled beef chick and it's gonna happen like you want the meat to come off like to break easily with a fork. Crocodile heads popping up out of the water. <laughs> That's a good example. Turn the gas off and leave the lid just off at the end there. If we had to cover it completely, the steam hits the top yeah. of the lid. Water can bring back I think it's solar still. That's right. In the oven. I mean, this guy in the oven, what he's doing? I'm 40, 150. Right, OK, he's going to put this in the oven. For about three and a half to four hours. Good job. Uh, the oven will do the job. I would have said put more sauce and, and add water. You know, I think you put too much stock. For pudding, I'm making one of my absolute favorite okay. Italian desserts. Banna cotta. Yeah, I reacted to his panna cotta video before. You can go and watch it on my YouTube channel. And he did a good job, okay? The only thing I didn't like, he added milk, which you don't do that. You only use cream to make panna cotta. But it, it does look good, and he did a very good job. Mm. Back to the main course. To match our hearty beef cheeks, I've chosen to use pappardelle. Pappardelle, yum. I love pappardelle. Rule number one when cooking pasta? Salt in first. Salt in first. Aspetta, aspetta. Is the sauce ready, Gordon? Show me the sauce first. Before you cook the pasta, show me the sauce. Is it ready? It needs to be ready. Olive oil. Use extra virgin olive oil, please. Not olive oil, no. One way cooking pasta. Salt in first. Salt in first, yeah. Olive oil in. Oh my God. Ma che olive oil in? You don't need olive oil in the pasta water. Ma che fai, Gordon? Don't waste it. First, olive oil is cheap. It's not nice. Extra virgin olive oil is the oil you need to use in the kitchen, especially if you're a billionaire like you. But you don't put olive oil in the water. No! Use a large pot with lots of water. Pasta in. Is the sauce ready? That's what I want to know. The pasta takes three minutes to cook. Twist it round so you don't break it. Nice. Bring that back on the board. It's going to take about three, four minutes. Flat leaf parsley. Like a parsley. You got a beautiful ragu. You don't need parsley in that beautiful ragu. You don't need basil, no parsley. It's ready to go. Four hours slow cooked. He cuts off the parsley. What is he gonna do the parsley? Huh? And chop it. Now, wait to see oh, these wow. beef cheeks. Beauties. Look at them. Let's have a look. Oh, look. 
Wait, 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 wait. So you're serving this ragu, pig beef chick, but you have to break it. Like, I want the meat to come apart, to fall apart, because you can't put a steak on top of the pasta. You, you cannot, cannot serve pasta, pasta with, a with a steak, steak on, on top. top. You can do this in England, but you don't do a guide to Italian cooking and mix steak and pasta. I don't know where you guys live, if you ever done that before, but oh, you don't put in the same plate a steak and pasta. No way. You don't do it. And every time you do it, remember, I'm angry and all the Italians are angry. Just see my face in the band your head going like this. Oh, pasta and steaks do not belong to the same plate. I want to taste. So beautiful. Mm. So good. So good. Just juggled on your jumper. Joke It's so sweet with this family. Right, drain the pasta. Where did you drain the pasta? Show me. Oh my god, with the cuts with the salt and pepper. Basta <laughs> to put salt and pepper, pepper in the pasta, pasta, in the colander. It's enough. I have already reacted to you cooking pasta the wrong way. Why do you still do it? Who told you to do this? The pasta doesn't need salt and olive oil and pepper in the colander. Put the pasta with the sauce. Pasta. My cake, fine. It'll drizzle of olive oil. In the colander, ma che fai? Where did you learn this? How did you become a master chef? Michelin star chef, you still do this, vergognati. Be ashamed. You did such a great video, and then at the end, you destroy everything again. Gordon, I was about to become your best friend. I always put the fresh pasta. Che fa the Oh, let's put fresh pasta. Oh my God, he's putting parsley in the colander. This guy is mad, this guy is crazy, he's mad. This, this guy, guy is, is mad. Don't. Then. My pocket fire got parsley. You got a beautiful slow cooked sauce. That parsley is going to ruin everything. This is the magic bit, okay? You take a little ladle of the juice, put that at the bottom, and you put. Look how nice it is. A beautiful slow cooked sauce. Pasta. On top of that sauce. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Now mix it. Mix it, mix it with the sauce. Nothing even more now, yeah. Mm. What about when you keep this for your girlfriend one day? Mix it! Uh, Just tell her where you got the recipe from, will you? Promise? Mix it with the sauce, mix it with the sauce! Promise. I know what you're still eating, Danny Stumber. What? Angora, mix it with the sauce! What are you doing there? You're putting a steak on top of the pasta. The pappardelle is dying. They need to swim in the sauce. Beautiful job, man. Ma smettila! Don't touch your son, focus on the pasta. It's like having a fish out of the ocean. The pasta needs to swim in the sauce. Give him the oxygen, give him his sauce. Don't put a steak on top. Ma per favore, Gordon, everything was so beautiful. Such a beautiful meal. I came to your house today, I had a beautiful meal, okay? And then you do this. And then something else I just realized. You give me pasta as a salad and now you give me pasta as main course. And the cazzo di pasta mi mangio. How much pasta do you want to give me? Huh? I, I wish you just did it orzo as a pasta. This is terrible. Because those pappardelle are dying, that beautiful slow cooked beef chick could have been served just as it is with bread. What's this obsession that you guys have to put steaks on top of pasta? What is the obsession? What is it? And do you know if you use a good quality pasta, they already have proteins, okay? They've got, they've got all the, 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 what you need. You can add some more proteins, like, yeah, meat or whatever, but not a steak. It doesn't work that way, guys. There's respect for food. There is respect for cultures. Respect for the pasta in this case, or even for the meat. The steak doesn't want to be with the pasta. The pasta doesn't want to be with the steak. I think we need to go back to basic here, you know? Like, we really need to go back to basic to learn the most important rules. And you can break the rules, of course, you can do whatever you like, but these type of rules cannot be broken. These rules, they're like commandments. They need to be respected. Third, jaw, and then you go over with the sauce. Put the sauce on the pasta, the pasta is dead now. What's that? Delicious. You've got the orrata. Burrata, <laughs> burrata, burrata. I've got the cheese. 
Ancora, I love doing this. It's enough, your poor son. Look at the pasta, vergognati. Look, vergognati. That pasta, you're gonna serve, you haven't served anything yet. You already made the pasta. By the time you serve, the pasta will be dry. The sauce will be cold. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Don't be cheeky. That was a bad joke. Don't be cheeky. Dinner. Quick big jam crostini with cream borata. That's very nice. Main course of slow cooked beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. It's not a ragu. It's not a ragu. It's not a ragu. A ragu is when the meat is like chopped into small pieces, are cubed, or like diced. You want the meat to be diced to be able to call it a ragu. Or you want the meat to be minced. You know, grounded. You can't call this a ragu because this is a beef cheek. It's like a steak. It's not a ragu. You're a Michelin star chef. You know what a ragu is. You must know what it is. If not, you're not a Michelin star chef. And the next time you see him on Master Chef, don't trust a show. Don't watch it anymore because he doesn't even know what a ragu is. For pudding, espresso panna cotta with cinnamon hazelnut brittle. That looks nice. That's very nice. Ma che cazzo dici best Italian tradition? The crostini with figs and burrata is not traditional, but it's beautiful. I love it. The orzo pasta salad, I don't know if it's traditional, but it's okay. That's nice. The frittata, that was beautiful. Not done in a traditional way, but it was beautiful. But this is not traditional. This is not nice. This is not beautiful. The beef chick, it's stunning. It's beautiful. But the pasta does not deserve this. So 75% of this was great. And then at the end, you destroyed everything. You destroyed everything. So skip the pasta, go straight to the panna cotta, okay? Guys, what do you think of this? What do you think of Gordon? I know you guys love Gordon. Why do you love him? Don't you think he needs to redeem himself? And, and re reply to me and do something that blows my mind, huh? Write a comment below, or write a comment on each channel, and let's do this together, Gordon, come on. Come on, we're, we're, we're getting closer, I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it you're trying to impress me, so. Let's cook together. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you on the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video or video recipe. E ora si mangia Vincenzo's Plate.